In today's video, we will install the SSF kit into the Adams Family at Games Legends Pinball 4KP Captain. What is shown in this video will also work with any FX Legends Pinball 4K machine as well. Keep in mind, two adults are required for the safe assembly and installation. Also, make sure the power cable is unplugged prior to installation. So in this video, we'll unbox the kit, partially disassemble the machine, install the kit, and put the machine back together, which is always good. <laughs> I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. When your SSF kit arrives, it'll be in a single box. Let's go ahead and open it up and see how it's packaged. It has two large foam pieces. Uh, to make it easier to get open, I'll just flip it upside down. There we go. In the middle of the foam is the base speaker. Along the sides are the exciters, and the rest is tucked away in the foam. The subwoofer is an 8-inch speaker and has a protective pad around the assembly. There is a single two-wire cable going to the box that will connect to the amplifier board later. On the back of the box, you'll also find the installation steps, which is pretty handy. All right, thing, what if I told you about staying on the topper? Not while I'm trying to record a video, please. This is the power supply board. There are three connectors on this board that will be of interest to us during assembly. The back of the board has a protective backing. And here we have the shielding cover for the power supply board. There are two labels applied, A and N, and that's where we'll be attaching three sets of cables. Speaking of cables, here's a bag full of them. <laughs> but don't get too worried, it, it looks worse than it really is. One thing I really appreciate when assembling something like this is having all the screws in individual bags and labeled as to what they are. But let's go ahead and put this away for now until we go through what else comes with the kit. This is the amplifier board. This is where we'll connect the majority of the cables. For example, the exciters, the subwoofer, the USB cable, and speaker cables are just a few examples of the wires that we'll be connecting to it. There are four exciter speakers that are included in the kit. Each is an 80 ohm, 25 watt exciter. And on the back, there is an adhesive backing to easily secure to the sides of the cabinet and each has a two-wire connector for easy attachment to the amplifier board. In addition, each exciter is labeled as to where it should be positioned on the cabinet. Now let's move on to assembling the kit. First, we'll partially disassemble the cabinet. At Games has created an excellent PDF that steps you through the kit installation very easily. I'll place a link down below where you can download it and print it for yourself. I would also recommend that you place all the screws that you remove from the machine in a Ziploc bag, otherwise they can easily get misplaced. To get started, flip the power switch and unplug the power at the back of the machine. Then remove all five screws holding in the sidebar and the three screws holding in the lockdown bar at the front. But don't forget, bag your screws. You'll need them again later. Then remove both the front and sidebar, and then remove the screws to the last remaining sidebar and the bar itself. We'll now remove the four screws on the front of the control panel. Then gently bring the control panel up and over, disconnect the gray cable as well as the black speaker cable. You can now set the control panel aside. Gently slide the glass down, make sure it's fully cleared the metal backing at the back, and remove it from the machine. To remove the main playfield, there are four screws that will need to be removed in these locations. Remove the four screws holding the playfield from all four corners of the display. Keep in mind, the two at the back are a little bit recessed, so it may be easier to remove them with a screwdriver that has a magnetic tip. Bring the display slightly up, then towards you until the back of the playfield display clears the panel at the back and tilt it sideways on the right side of the cabinet. Disconnect the two backlight cables on both ends of the playfield. These are small white connectors. To remove the display cable, 
flip the latch at the bottom of the connector upward. Then you can gently remove the display cable and remove the display from the machine. Now we'll install the SSF kit into the Legends Pinball 4K. We'll now install the eight standoffs that will be used to mount each of the boards to the cabinet. Of course, we have two boards. We'll install the first four into these locations. The bottom of the cabinet that you see here is the left side of the machine, just for your reference. Install all four standoffs for the power supply board. Now we'll repeat the same for the four standoffs used by the amplifier board. Next, we'll mount the power supply board and the metal shielding. You'll find a cable in protective packaging. Remove the packaging to the cable and insert the connector into the board on the end. This will make the assembly process a little easier. Move any cables out from under the area and align the board over the four standoffs. Now place the metal shielding over the power supply board such that the A label is facing towards the base speaker cover. Now, using three of the F4 screws, secure the shield and the board to the standoffs, but skip the corner near the A label for now. When I originally attempted to sandwich the ground wire between the board and the shield, it slid out. Instead, we'll secure it directly to the shielding with the fourth F4 screw. Here's a close-up for reference. We also took care of installing the cable in the end position as the clearance there is very tight. Our next step will be to install the amplifier board to this location. Position the board over the standoffs such that the five white connectors are facing towards the subwoofer speaker grill. Then, using the four remaining F4 screws, secure the board to the standoffs. In the next step, we'll install each of the four exciters into locations D, E, F, and G. The assembly process is the same for each, but do make sure that the label on the exciter matches the location on the cabinet. Remove the adhesive backing, then carefully position the exciter over the four screw holes. Then, install four F1 screws and be sure to tighten it down very good. Then repeat for each exciter. Make sure the area around the speaker grill is clear of any wires or cables. We will be installing six F3 screws into these locations. Take the subwoofer assembly and position it such that the speaker cable end is towards the boards that we just installed. Lay the assembly flat, such that the speaker is facing down over the speaker grill cover. Then, align the holes to the speaker box over the six holes on the bottom of the cabinet. Screw in and tighten all six F3 screws into the subwoofer assembly. Now let's take a quick look and admire our work so far. The rest will go a bit faster it's primarily just connecting things up. And in case you were wondering, here's what the back of the machine looks like. On step seven, we'll connect the eight pin cable into the far left port labeled DC 24 volts in using cable B. The opposite end will connect to the left port on the power amplifier board identified as CN2. In an earlier version of this video, I made a slight mistake. You'll want the red wires to connect in this orientation, that is, the red wires towards the top of the connector and the black or ground wires towards the bottom if installing from the left side of the cabinet. And again, the opposite end will connect to the left port on the power amplifier board, identified as CN2, with the red wires on the left and the black wires on the right. Cable C in step six has both an eight pin and a six pin end, the 8-pin in will go into the power amplifier board, and the 6-pin in will go into the amplifier board itself. Here's a quick look at cables B and C and where they are connected. Now we'll connect the four exciter cables. 
Cable D is the rear exciter and will plug into the port labeled RSOR. Cable E is the rear left cable and will plug into the port labeled RSOL. Cable F is the right side cable and will plug into SSOR. And the remaining exciter cable G will plug into the port SSOL. Now take the cable going to the subwoofer and plug it into this port at the upper right. Cable I, J, and K are all connected to a single cable. For cable I, position it towards the back of the machine. We'll need to install it into the back box. We'll take cable J and plug it into the top black connector labeled FL. For cable K, we'll connect that to the black connector labeled FR. Remove all eight screws from the back of the back box, leave the top middle one for last, and then remove the back panel. Feed cable I into the slot in the middle. Disconnect cable labeled number four going to the back box speakers and replace it with cable I. Connect one end of the USB cable into the main board at the back of the machine. Use your hand to support the bottom of the board while plugging it in. Now plug in the opposite end of the USB cable into the amplifier board. Now we'll reinstall the playfield. Set it on the side as we did earlier and with two people plug in both backlight cables. Insert the main display cable Flip the latch down to lock it into place. And don't forget to reapply the black tape to secure the cable to the back of the display. Gently insert the playfield at a slight angle under the back panel and lower it into place. At the front of the machine, reconnect the black cable to the exciters going to the control panel as well as the gray data cable. Then reinsert the control panel to the front of the machine. We'll close up the rest of the machine in a moment, but you may want to perform a quick test to make sure everything is working properly. Plug in the power and turn on the machine, then navigate to settings, then health check, and select sound check. This is my voice on the left front speaker. This is my voice on the left hand side. This is my voice on the left side speaker. This is my voice on the left hand side. This is my voice on the left rear speaker. This is my voice on the left hand side. This is my voice on the right front speaker. This is my voice on the right hand side. This is my voice on the right side speaker. This is my voice on the right hand side. This is my voice on the right rear speaker. This is my voice on the right hand side. This is my voice coming from the left and right front speaker. This is my voice in the center. My voice would be out of phase on three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My voice is out of phase. Well, the test was a success, so we'll go ahead and power off the machine, unplug it, and put everything back together. Before you slide the glass all the way into place, make sure it's below the metal frame at the back. You can crack the glass if you aren't careful here and you raise up on the glass. So before I slide it fully into place, I need to make sure the display and the glass is clean. This isn't a promo or anything, but get some glass cleaner and some microfiber cloths and make sure everything looks clean, especially fingerprints, hair, and dust that may be caught between the two. Then reinstall the four screws to hold the playfield display into place. Position the control panel and reinstall all four screws. Next, reinstall both sidebars using the 10 screws, five on each side, and then the front lockdown bar. And look at that, only three screws left in the Ziploc bag. Didn't lose a single one. <laughs> uh, now we'll go ahead and reinstall the back panel with all eight screws. And oh yeah, by the way, I did have those in a separate bag. <laughs> anyway. 
close up the back panel, plug it back up, and guess what? We are all done with the installation. I've only had the SSF kit installed for about two days on the production machine at this point. The goal for this video was to demonstrate how to install it. I have two Zen tables that I can test, the Adams Family and Peanut Snoopy Pinball, which I'll show here. The audio sounds impressive. You can hear the ball rolling across the table, loud thumps and thuds. Of course, it's not going to come through that well in this video with only two speakers, though. There are nine in total used with the SSF kit and playing a Legends 4K enabled table. Now we'll check out some brief gameplay. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope what you've seen here has made it easier for you to get your SSF kit installed on your Legends Pinball 4K or FX Legends 4K machine. If you found it informative, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, thing, come on buddy, that's enough of that.